She said something really clear. <laughs> I'm. I know. We we'll just put up anymore. Ms. Van Vianen, I believe we're ready to start. Am I correct? Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the annual general meeting for the Council of the Town of Vesuvius, Monday, June the 1st, 2015, at 1 p.m. in Council Chambers. Um, first on the agenda is the Mayor's message, which I'm going to, I'm going to read. On behalf of the Town of Vesuvius Town Council and staff, I am pleased to present the 2014 annual report. This report provides the community with an update on projects identified in our three-year business plan. The improvement of Gyro Park Beach continues to be a priority using resort municipality funding. Water metering, water twinning, new sewer lift station at Jackshaw Gardens, and a water treatment plant are all identified in our future plans. Road construction on 74th Avenue from 89th Street to 85th Avenue, 89th Street to 85th Street in scheduled for 2015. Council also looks forward to building our new fire hall in 2015 and 2016. I am proud to inform the residents that the town of Vesuvius reported a surplus in 2014. This money will help us with funding future capital plans. Our mission statement is important to provide quality community services and facilities which meet the needs of the current and future residents of Vesuvius in a socially, economically, and environmentally sustainable manner. In keeping with this statement, we strive to ensure that we provide a safe environment, efficiently managed services, and, att and an attractive town for both our citizens and our many visitors. I would like to acknowledge and thank the volunteers who contribute countless hours to our community. The many festivals, conferences, farmers markets, horse racing, live music performances are annual events that can only happen with the support of our dedicated volunteers. As the Mayor of Vesuvius, it is my great privilege to be associated with the council and staff who are working so diligently to provide the utmost quality of services to our residents in a fiscally responsible manner. Osuius shall continue to be a transparent, inclusive, and progressive community offering Canada's warmest welcome. And I would like Mr. Romanko to give the CAO's report. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. In uh, 2014, our administrative and operational teams continued their commitment to overall success and excellence in the delivery of municipal services to Soyuz residents and visitors. A big part of this commitment was delivering services to all in a cost-effective and efficient manner, enabling municipal tax and utility rates that are the envy of other communities. I'm happy to report that we have received, uh, achieved remarkable success on many of the initiatives identified in the 2014 business plan and illustrated adaptability to respond to the evolving priorities that challenged us during the course of the year. The business plan identifies projects on a three-year basis and su successfully functions as a staff and council reference and planning tool. The enclosed department uh, reports that you'll hear from today provide an in-depth summary of the activities. However, I'd like to highlight some of our most notable achievements. First, in the area of public facility accessibility, in response to the Social Planning and Research Council of BC Accessibility Audit, Council provided financial policy to allocate $20,000 per year to improve accessibility in public facilities. One major project implemented in 2014 was the development of a boat slip access ramp at the marina. In terms of Council administration transparency, uh, we continue to have open <coughs> meetings for budget development, held a public budget consultation meeting, continue to re release in-camera motions, delivered a successful election program, and fire hall referendum. In the area of infrastructure construction, Splash Park Phase 2 was started, change room improvements at the Sonora Center, Gyro Park Phase A tender and construction startup, fire hall design and public consultation, construction of Hammerhead turnaround at the end of Spartan Drive, sidewalk on Jubilee 87th to Vedette Drive, stormwater collection system to the secondary school playing fields, and an extension to the marina boat launch. 
service efficiency, completed sewer capacity study and community service master plan, reduced staffing in the planning department, and implemented seasonal worker and parks, developed and implemented a comprehensive new council orientation and received positive reviews in three external operational audits. Community services, initiated actions to repurpose the airstrip to industrial lots, developed and circulated a request for expression of interest for town-owned Richter property, explored opportunities to attract future employees of Correctional Center and implementation of the MMBC recycling program. Notable challenges and opportunities for 2015 will include revisiting the resort municipality strategic plan with related stakeholders, resort municipality expenditure on development of Gyro Beach, tendering and construction of the new fire hall, development and implementation of asset management program, development of water meter implementation strategy, and policy development on community water meter installation, completion of the splash park, and redevelopment of 74th Avenue from 89th to 85th Street. My appreciation is extended to all staff and volunteers whose efforts made this another successful year. I look forward to continuing to serve the Asuyas community and implementing the directions of council. All staff look forward to working with the new four-year term council to provide high quality services and improve the quality of life in the Suez. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Romanko. Um, corporate services, Ms. Van Vianen. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The Corporate Services Department encompasses legislative responsibilities for the corporate officer under the Community Charter, main reception duties, bylaw enforcement, land issues, human resources, emergency management, victim services, transit, insurance, contract administration, leases, and records management. Some of the highlights, we had another busy year in 2014. There were three land issues dealt with, including land acquisition and license to use agreements. Seven new bylaws were passed. The director sat on the focus group for transit. The 25-year future plan is set to be forwarded to the BC Transit Board in 2015. In human resources, there were five positions posted and filled. Three HR policies were completed, including the progressive discipline, employee service recognition, and working alone. Five contracts were administered, including victim services, bylaw enforcement, town janitorial, public washroom caretaker, and BC Transit South Okanagan Transit Society. Under emergency management, a new bylaw was adopted. The emergency executive committee met with the Desert Live and Osseous Festival Society to discuss their events. Several workshops, training, and meetings were attended. There were no serious flooding issues with Osseous Lake, which is monitored closely throughout the spring and emergency support services were called out for a residential fire in June. Records management systems continue to be improved. A file audit was completed and old files were destroyed or archived as required. File storage was moved from the Arts Council building to the DO building. Legal filing remains in paper form and shelving improvements were made to the town office vault to improve storage capacity. Goose management efforts continued. There were four complete freedom of information requests dealt with. Ten liability insurance cases were dealt with, of which four became claims under our MIA policy. Two ICBC-related claims of damage to town property were handled. The 2013 annual report was prepared and produced. General upkeep to the town's website continued. Webcasting of council meetings continued with a total of 982 unique individual visitors viewing. The counter petition on the fire hall construction borrowing bylaw was verified. Corporate Services conducted the 2014 general local election and the referendum on the fire hall construction borrowing. The council orientation manual was revamped and provided in electronic form. Staff attended various professional development opportunities. There were 189 complaints re registered at Town Hall with unsightly properties topping the list at 89 followed by animal complaints at 28 and general requests at 27. Under bylaw enforcement, the bylaw officers dealt with the following park infractions during the summer of 2014. For alcohol, 916. Boat in swim area, 15. Dogs, 704. Driving, parking on grass, 6. Inappropriate clothing, 7. Nuisance, 27. Smoking, 895. Tightrope between posts, 2. Traffic, 29. Unauthorized selling, 10. In addition, approximately 58 warning tickets were issued. 
Municipal tickets were issued for the following infractions. Boat trailer parking, 36. Dogs at large, 6. Parks, 3. Traffic, 7. And mooring, 1. Bylaw officers completed unsightly property inspections on 89 different properties, with some of these requiring several, several inspections, taking up a considerable, amount, about, uh, sorry, a considerable amount of enforcement time. In 2014, the town entered into agreement with both the town of Oliver and the RDOS for temporary use of the dog pound. The amount of animals that were impounded from the town of Osseas were 12 dogs and 10 cats. There were 41 dogs from the RDOS and one dog from the town of Oliver. The town successfully upheld its dog control bylaw in the provincial court through a municipal ticket dispute that carried over from 2013. And I wish to thank Lori Scott and Kathy Fischer, as well as all relief staff for all their hard work throughout the year to help corporate services get all this done. Thank you very much. Uh, financial services, Mr. Zackel. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. The finance department's responsibilities and authority come from the legislation mandated by the community charter, provincial and federal statutes, and municipal bylaws. The department's main goals are to provide excellent financial services to the citizens of Osseas, town council, staff, visitors, and external agencies, to provide sound and timely financial advice to council and the administration to assist in making the best decisions on behalf of the citizens of Osseas, and to safeguard the assets of the town of Osseas. The functions of the finance department are the preparation and monitoring of the five-year financial plan and the annual financial statements, preparing and interpreting interim financial statements, levy levying and collecting municipal taxes and utility fees, processing accounts payable, receivables and payroll, maintaining and updating cemetery records, developing and maintaining financial systems, borrowing and investing surplus and reserve funds. Total revenues generated from 2014 from sale of land and or services, taxation, grants, fees, and other sources totaled $10,435,844, less expenses of $8,488,125 for a net revenue of $1,947,719 as a net surplus. Of that 1.9 million, 1.299 million of that was actually cash surplus. The rest was equity surplus. 2014 saw a 1.75% increase to municipal taxes, a $10 increase to residential water user fees, a $3.35 increase to residential sewer user fees, a $3 increase to, to garbage and recycling fees, and a copy of the 2014 audited financial statements, audited by White Kennedy Chartered Accountant out of Penticton, is located under the financial statement section of this report. And at this time as well, I'd like to thank um, all finance staff and, um, and clerical staff for all of their hard work um, during the year um, dealing with the customers of the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. And planning and development, Mr. Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor McCorda. Uh The director continued membership in the Fire Hall Coordination Committee, uh, Capital Projects Coordination Committee, Waterfront Steering Committee, the Soyuz Airport Expansion Committee, and the Technical Implementation Committee of the South Okanagan Regional Growth Strategy. Under planning, Southeast Medlock Area Plan, Refinements were made to our OCP intensive residential development permit guidelines for applying to future residential development at Southeast Metal Arc. This uh, modern form based zoning approach employs written and graphic guidelines to ensure that uh, Southeast Metal Arc will be a showpiece for urban design excellence. <coughs> Pardon me. A request for expressions of interest was issued to solicit submissions from the private sector to purchase and develop the town owned Richter property, 3.23 acres, in southeast Meadowlark, with about 40 mixed housing units, including five affordable units. So far, no serious responses have been uh, received, so a different approach may be taken. Housing. Work commenced on terms of reference for affordable housing uh, authority to target affordable housing units to uh, qualified recipients with a priority on housing moderate income younger working families. A housing options report was prepared describing possible accommodations on future workforce members and their families in different locations across town, including on some town-owned properties. Uh, turning to special projects, uh, first the fire hall. The town's fire hall, fire hall coordination committee of fire department administrative representatives work uh, closely with key and BR architects and planners to prepare a final design for our new fire hall based on the earlier pre-design. 
specialized structural, mechanical, electrical, civil engineering, and quantity surveying, some consultants were involved. Cost estimates were uh, upgraded to a Class B level with a probable accuracy of about 10%, plus or minus, and formed part of the town's borrowing bylaw, which went forward for voter assent. Following a successful referendum, Council approved KMBR under subconsultant team to proceed in 215 with working drawings, tendering, and construction management for completing the new fire hall by the, by the fall of 216. That work just commenced last year. Landscaping projects, outline design landscaping architects were retained to undertake design, contract tendering, and contract construction management for implementing lakefront landscaping projects uh, from our Osoyoos Waterfront Master Plan. Projects successfully completed in 214 include landscaping the marina parking lot, slope and parking lot islands, landscaping and irrigation works uh, for the Fuji Course slope and around the ceiling club, and landscaping in the sheer down slope south of watermark. In 2012, a gyro park plan was prepared through a charrette stakeholder process and endorsed by council. In 2014, work was commenced on the gyro park multi-purpose plaza, which is one of the major priorities identified in the gyro park plan. With consultant assistance from Outland, stage A of the plaza is now near completion and stage B will follow later this year under policy and bylaw improvements. Council approved a new street food vendor selection approval policy to competitively attract quality food vendors who can commit long term to serve the resident tourist market in Soyuz with good service and attractive equipment. Council approved new provisions in our zoning bylaw whereby they can consider applications for locating a medical marijuana grow operation in a as an allowable discretion use in the M1 Gen general industrial zone subject to sp specified regulations. Council made our commercial, made our commercial off-street parking regulations more business friendly, including substantially reducing in-loop parking requirements from 10,000 to 3,000 per space, lowering parking requirements for license established from one space per three seats to one space per four, relaxing par parking requirements in the downtown C1 zone for nearly all uses, and making it easier to change uses without adding stalls, including for restaurants. <coughs> Council replaced the previous uh, multifamily R7 residential zone provision, which automatically allowed increased multifamily residential densities in the downtown core with their discretion, this is what they replaced it with, with their discretion to consider suitable applications to comprehensive development zoning. Council approved a system of fines for specified foreshore and lake zoning infractions to protect lake water quality and sustainability. Uh, turning to development management, Council supported Pembers a state's application to the Agricultural Land Commission for releasing 21.984 acres of the Wish property at 4927 Main Street property from the ALR. The main intended use of the property is for an RV park. Public benefits would include a dedicated connector road alignment uh, east of the site with some road construction, a gifted site for a secondary uh, fire hall, uh, an agreement f and an agreement uh, for B uh, Pembra and the town to work together on building and operating a large full surface aquatic center to benefit RV patrons and the general public. Council approved an indoor mo model railway tourist attraction as a site-specific permitted use in the M1 General Zone at 11611 115th Street. Council approved a change at 12,300 Pine Arts Place from 18 previously approved townhouses to, to uh, eight duplexes. The uh, director approved five repairing development permits for various lakeshore properties, principally to allow constructing rock walls planting vegetation or redeveloping waterfront banks, and in one case to allow construction of a house. <coughs> the uh, director also approved a commercial development permit at uh, 5907 Main Street to allow interior renovation to Convivia Restaurant and the addition of an outside uh, patio. The Board of Variance approved a development variance permit at 23 Solana Key for front yard setback reduction to allow a house addition. Turning to uh, construction, 
in a good year last year, 64 building permits were issued in 214 for a construction value of $6.7 million, which is a, an increase of half a million over the previous year, including 11 new single-family dwellings and two duplexes. 280 building inspections were accomplished, four stop workers were issued, two abandoned buildings were safely boarded up and posted with no occupancy notices. Uh, the building inspector took over responsibility from a, pri a pre private contractor for fire inspections and in 2014 made 240 inspections of publicly accessible buildings. Sewer connections. Eight sewer, sewer hookup inspections were completed for the Northwest Sewer. Uh, 42 uh, follow-ups were made on complaints and zoning bylaw infractions. Under sign permits, sign, 17 sign permits were issued in 2014 for a value of $975. Seven sign removal uh, notices were successfully executed. Uh, business licensing, and I'll just summarize this, there was 100, 466 licenses were issued for a total value of $41,380. And in closing, I'd like to thank our uh, staff, Neil Paget, Brian Hilson, and uh, Debbie Ganney for their contributions and Steve Shannon, who left to a position in community services in April 2014. I also appreciate the support provided by council, and the CEO, as well as my senior <coughs> managers, except for this guy here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, this is on camera, Mr. Cunningham. <laughs> so uh, now we will hear from uh, operational services, Mr. Doucette. You betcha, the heart of the community. <laughs> Uh, first of all, thank you. Um, last year, Public Works uh, Operational Service, better known as Public Works, was involved in about 32 various capital projects, equipment purchases, and planning. Some of the highlights, uh, there'll be repetitions from other department heads, but uh, we constructed a hammerhead at the end of uh, north end of Spartan to allow for a little cul-de-sac. Uh, the, the roads that are in good condition were crack sealed. This sort of prevents the, uh, the, the water from reaching the sub-base and it prolongs the life of, this, uh, of, the, of the road. Uh, detailed design of 74th, as was mentioned, uh, there's an open house tomorrow at between 6 and 7.30 at the Sonora. Anybody interested? Uh, we are planning uh, fall construction of 74th. A new sidewalk was constructed at, on Jubilee from Vedette to 87th. A man bucket that we had for our crane truck that is um, beyond repairs, a new bucket was purchased. Uh, some of the uh, Pioneer walkway washrooms, some of the other ones give, were given a facelift. Uh, again, mentioned the boat launch was improved by adding concrete section to the bottom end to prevent uh, any hazards from jet ski boats or anything else. Uh, a few street lights were changed on Spartan. We, we removed the decorative ones were high in, in maintenance and vandalism. And we just put our own uh, town standard lights. Uh, we changed the lights at our shop um, to high efficiency and we got refunded from Fortis on some of the costs. Uh, the landfill with, with the uh, MMBC recycling program, a number of, of uh, modifications had to be done to the uh, recycling area, which was done. Uh, some of the waters, mostly a lot of this was maintenance. Uh, we replaced the pump and station number nine, that's for the uh, the irrigation uh, system. Uh, the, the, the town reservoirs were cleaned up. Uh, the new uh, pump was installed at the 402 booster station. Uh, some SCADA work was also done, uh, including a new panel at, at well number six. Uh, storm management, again, to protect the lake. And also, we extended it to uh, the highway uh, to remove that pond that was always there by uh, What's on me? Uh, sewer wise, uh, sewer capacity was completed. Uh, the, the reclaimed water was extended. Uh, we added some more order controls to some of our northwest sector sewer systems. And also, personnel wise, uh, like I say, Mrs. Ms. Carol Nizdoli left us after 41 years, and uh, I see she's enjoying her retirement very nicely. Uh, also, for myself, I'd like to thank Mike Thomas and my Public Works crew for uh, a job well done. Uh, my fellow department heads and all the workers, uh, even council, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good year last year and looking forward to another good year this year, at least part of one. 
Um, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Doucette. <laughs> Isn't he? Uh, okay, next we have community services. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the Community Services Department completed another great year of achievements, successes, and new programs. During 2014, we were proactive in listening to patrons and have once again been instrumental in the health and well-being of the residents of the Sioux. Completion of the Community Services Master Plan will guide us over the next 10 plus years. We had numerous staffing changes and were successful in receiving both annual and new grants. Here are the highlights for 2014. In terms of administration, Community Services Master Plan, RFP was prepared and advertised and awarded to Lees and Associates and was formally adopted by Council. A program supervisor returned to work in January after taking maternity leave. We received a grant from the Municipal Insurance Association to assist with the purchase of a David arm. Completed a community snapshot through Healthy Living Coalition, including receiving information on five pillars identified by Interior Health, which included tobacco reduction, healthy eating, active living, a healthy built environment, and priority populations. Community Services Grant Program, we received over $60,000 in grant requests and provided funding to the majority of the grant applications. We did three leisure guides in-house and circulated throughout the community. The grants received from the Heart and Stroke Foundation and the National AED Program to purchase AEDs for the Sonora Community Center and Sambol Arena. Staff attended uh, the BCRPA Symposium and the RFABC Conference. Fundamental Movement Skills uh, Training Seminar, World Host, and Microsoft Office 2013 Training Sessions. Staff meetings and crew talks were conducted throughout the year as part of our OHNS regulations. Relief building staff worker was, was created and two new relief workers were hired for the Sun Bowl Arena. We also received $4,000 grant through the RBC Learn to Play project. Staff assisted with the MMDC recycling program which officially kicked off in May. We hired seven summer students around the Cactus Kids Day Camp at the Cactus Center. Our ICE users meeting was held during arena shutdown to review the past year's activities and receive feedback from users for the upcoming season. And I co-chaired the Joint Occupational Health and Safety Committee. In terms of parks and trails, additions to the Splash Park included our water cannon, our water leaf, our rubber tire resurfacing, and upgrades to the washrooms. We held the grand opening on June 6th, and TELUS presented us with a check for over $26,000 to help offset these costs. Staff was also part of the Waterfront Steering Committee which included a phase approach to Gyro Park and the marina landscaping. The West Bench Ball Diamonds were upgraded to shale infields with the assistance of our senior slow pitch organizations in the Soyuz. In terms of facilities, our desert park restoration, we had insulation, drywall, and painting in the bedding area after a, uh, a leak. Our department took over the operation of the Desert Sunrise Marina, and all the slips were leased for the year, which also included a wait list. Uh, stage upgrades to the Sonora Community Center included side curtains and floor restoration. Uh, the Arts Council provided funding to help offset these costs in exchange for the use of the facility for future fundraising initiatives. Ice removal at the Sun Bowl Arena was completed using a different procedure to mitigate potential environmental effects, which included removal of the paint. The Sun Bowl summer programs included camps for the West Coast All-Stars, our annual ringette camp, our figure skating camps, the Coyotes Identification Camp, the Soyuz Hockey Camp, and of course, Audrey Bakewell Power Skating Clinics. And renovations were completed on the Women's Change Room at the Sonora Community Center. In terms of programs and special events, pickleball continued to be popular, drop-in was expanded, and the league was started. We received a $1,000 grant from the British Columbia Recreation and Parks Association towards costs for family day celebration. Our Bricks for Kids activity using Lego blocks to teach children concepts of building. Uh, Pinnacles Football Club hosted an icebreaker tournament at Desert Park. Uh, Clara's Big Ride was held in May and staff worked with our Desert Sun Counseling, the Kiwanis Club, and the BC Schizophrenia Society to organize a successful event. Beach Volleyball at Gyro Park had 20 registered teams. 
and other events included the Terry Fox Run, our mass registration, and again, Halloween Howl. And I'd also like to say kudos to our staff, to council, and to our numerous volunteers who have made 2014 a good year. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, next we have the fire department report from Mr. Romenko. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. This report is uh, delivered on behalf of Chief uh, Rick Jones. Uh, the Town of Asuyus operates a volunteer fire department, which consists of 28 paid on-call <coughs> firefighters. Uh, in 2014, the department responded to 158 calls, 111 for the Town of Asuyus and 47 for Rural Area A. In addition, the town contracts fire protection services to the rural, Asuyus Rural Fire Protection District and the Asuyus Indian Band. The town continues to maintain the mutual aid agreement with neighboring fire departments to provide assistance to the Asuyus Fire Department should additional resources be required. In return, the Asuyus Fire Department supports the neighboring fire departments as needed. The town continues to enforce the false alarm uh, system regulations bylaw and uh, the planning continued on the development of the new fire hall, which is proposed to be located on the Richter property. Fire Department Building Committee developed preliminary floor plans and plot plans to accommodate fire department facility needs and access. These plans included building siting, access to fire apparatus, parking, and training ground. The firemen continued to host their annual fundraisers in 2014, which included the oyster feed and the annual Easter weekend haircuts the organization of which involved numerous amounts of volunteer time by members and their families to ensure that these events run smoothly. The funds uh, raised were donated to the burn unit at the Vancouver General Hospital, BC Cancer Society, Multiple Sclerosis Society, Ronald McDonald House, two bursaries awarded <coughs> to graduating students at the Asuya Secondary School, South Okanagan General Hospital, and the Pediatric Unit at Penticton Regional Hospital. At the end of the day, it's all about doing what we can to help those in the need in our community. Thank you very much. Well, thank you to all of the directors. Um, as you can hear, uh, that took half an hour for them to, to list all of the things that they do for the town. And we absolutely appreciate it. And it's at this particular meeting that we can see all of the, have a list of everything. And of course, you have, uh, for, for those people who got it in the mail. This is a summary. Um, it, the, the entire report is on the website, so you can have a look at that as well. Um, w one thing about the summary, I, I wondered, either I need new glasses or the print is a little small. <laughs> I've heard that from a couple of people. However, all the information is there. Now, from council's point of view, and this is um, this is unusual because usually uh, council gets to uh, to say their bit first, and then I'm at the end. But this time, I'm going to be first. Um, some of the things that um, that we uh, council is looking at is uh, council priorities. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that roads and um, and our sidewalks and our parks are well maintained, and we think that's a huge priority. Water issues is another thing that we're, and you will probably hear more about this one. Um, we think that um, that protecting our lake is important, um, making sure that we have good water in our town, that we have, that includes um, sewer lift stations and water twinning and water metering. Um, that, that report will be out in September about whether water metering is going to be included, but you need to know that in order to apply for grants for some of these other things, one of the first things that they will look at is do you have water metering in place? So we'll seriously look at that once the report comes out. Um, resort municipality funding is a huge issue <coughs> in our town, and I know Mr. Romanko's going to a, a meeting this week with the other resort municipality CAOs, and the town is having a resort municipality workshop next week for um, council and a few of the people who are involved in this and uh, to make sure that we're on the right page. Without resort municipality, municipality funding, we would not have been able to do the work that we have done down at Gyro. Um, 
We are um, hiring uh, a new uh, public works administrator um, sometime soon, and while we will all be very sorry to uh, to not have the humor of Mr. Doucette at meetings, I'm thinking we may be able to invite him back the odd time. Um, we're also uh, hiring another senior planner for public uh, for planning and development services, and that's in that's going on right now too. They've been working with uh, about half the half the manpower that they did a couple of years ago. The airport lands was another issue that we had to deal with this year. It was con we had considered looking at repurposing the airport lands. And um, there were a lot of issues uh, to deal with this, and we have decided at this point that we have several other things on the agenda that we're going to, to be dealing with. And so that particular um, part of it has been stopped. It can be opened up again. We can decide to continue with it at some point in the future, but right now we've decided that we spent a lot of time on this and we're, going, we're not going to do anything further at this point. So it'll stay the way it is, and I'm sure all of the people that go out and race cars on there will be very happy. Um, I, I think that's about, oh, the fire hall. That's a, that's a huge issue, and I have attended um, several meetings. Um, Councillor Rhodes and I quite often attend the meetings for the fire hall um, with the architect and, and various people that are involved in making sure that the planning is done properly and what an enormous uh, undertaking that is. And um, uh, thank you to Mr. Cunningham. We've kind of got things on, on track, I think. We're hopefully within budget. We have to be. And, um, and we're going to be starting the fire hall probably at the end of, of, uh, of uh, August. So that's all I'm going to say. And I'm going to ask uh, Council if they would like to give a report. We'll start with uh, Councillor Rhodes. Thank you, uh, Mayor McCordoff. Uh, well, since there's nothing less left to talk about, because <laughs> you got to go first, uh, I wanted to take this opportunity uh, once again to uh, uh, thank our CAO, all of the directors who are all sitting in the room, uh, all of the staff that we have, all of the volunteers that contributed to our community over the last year. Uh, way to go. Thank you so much for making this a great community to live in, uh, right from the strength of our financials down to how well and beautiful our parks are looking right now. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of everybody, and uh, I wanted to pass it on to you in a very sincere way in this, uh, in this public forum. Uh, you just make me so proud, and this is just such a great, great town to live in. So thank you very much. And could we say ditto? <laughs> yeah, We're I'll good at that. Don't You'll be <laughs> okay, right. Councillor Youngberg. Uh, thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Uh, just uh, a few weeks in the chair in 2014, um, getting my feet wet, and the orientation that uh, we have went through has been very informative and uh, tries to keep us all on the beaten path. Uh, my uh, portfolios are uh, Child and Youth Care uh, Committee, of which. Um, I was um, invited at the very end of uh, December of 2014, and uh, the Okanagan Regional Library, which we're working on a couple of um, situations that we're going to work out there. And um, the Child Care Centre, I met with them in December, right after their Christmas party. And I'm just very, very happy to see Desert Park uh, moving ahead. We had 120 horses up there, which brought so much money into the community over the three months they were here. And um, to the, all the volunteers that are the heart of our community, thank you so much again to all of you for working with me over this past year and um, doing such a great job in keeping OSUIS Canada's warmest welcome. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. Thank you. Uh, I also uh, wanted to thank our CAO and staff uh, for the training and support. You know, coming in as a, as a first year counselor uh, can be quite overwhelming seeing everything that goes on b uh, behind the scenes to, to make a, a town run. Um, but we, we were prepared so well, and uh, the resources and support that are given to us um, were, were amazing. So a huge thank you for that. Um, and uh, just a thank you to all the town staff. Uh, and I agree, the community looks fantastic right now. 
a lot of positive things to look forward to in 2015 and I'm looking forward to being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Mayor McCordoff. I also got to say ditto to the administration and the staff behind the scenes that help us uh, move forward in this town, all the volunteers also that are committed. And, and for the public, if you haven't been down to Gyro Park, the first phase is done. It's just gorgeous down there to walk through down there. And I'll mention there's a nice pancake breakfast down there this Saturday at 8 a.m. <laughs> if you're interested in pancakes. Also, I'm really excited to see Desert Park Grandstand being moved forward because I've talked to a lot of people and there's a lot of groups around town that are actually anxious to use that facility for different events. So I think you will see more events beside horses come to town. And uh, with that, I sort of on the Economic Development Committee uh, represent the town and I think you will see more things coming to this town in the near future and look forward to digging the hole for the fire hall because people are asking when's the shovel going in the ground and as you heard it will be this fall and it will be open next year and I'm sure we'll have a ribbon cut and everybody will be welcome to walk through it. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to all of council and all of the directors and next on uh, that I we're opening this to the public and if there is anyone who would like to um, to ask a, 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 a question yes mr. Marcelli would you like to come up to the microphone please we need a motion to accept the oh. annual report I uh, do I need that first yes okay excuse me could we have a motion please to accept the annual report uh, Councillor King, Councillor Youngberg, all in favor? Uh oh, what? They were both sitting there with their hands up, and I'm looking left right now. I usually look right. No, it was the way they held their hands. Oh, want buzzers. You want buzzers, so all in favor? Thank you. No, not, not a buzzer. Okay, Mr. Marcelli. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor. Councillors, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Cy Marcelli, Council Watchdog. I have a few things. Under the page number seven, it's, we were talking about uh, elections and fire hall and so on. That was the referendum. There was a total eligible numbers of electors were 4,742 according to the town of Osoyoos ballot accounting during the 2014 general elections. Only 4,470 ballots were ordered. There is a discrepancy of 200 72 and what did happen where did it go I asked chief election officer and mr. Romenko I never got answers but just for the record madam mayor councillors going back quarter century when I started 1993 before that town of Osoyoos always ordered 5,000 ballots. Despite we had uh, less eligible people, for instance, 1999, 2,662, and so on. 2011, there were available 4,300. Uh, 4, we ordered 5,000. So the question actually it's of 530 unused ballots are unaccounted for. Uh, page number two, that's about town of our corporations of town of Osoyoos. Madam Mayor and Councillors, are you checking and comparing last year's exact numbers? because this is 2011 as of December 31st, and this is 2014. And there is a two column, on the right is 2013, and the left is 2014. For instance, page number two, financial position of town of Osoyoos. 
under accumulating surplus as well non-financial assets, suddenly we are having 54,888,746 dollars reported in present financial statements for 2014 comparing to 2013. But 2013, it was reported only 50 million, 943,086 dollars. Same with the uh, prepaid expenses. And basically, total uh, surplus was now 60 million, which is not, according to last year's, 57 million 692 dollars. So these are why the numbers are changing. Um, would you like someone to answer yes, that? Yes, please, uh, Prime Minister uh, Dockel, because he's uh, his, uh, his uh, First department. of all, I need to tell you, Mr. Yeah. Murselli, that these numbers have been uh, ratified by White Kennedy, and they've gone into it in great detail, and I think that uh, that it's probably something that is explainable in accounting. So we'll ask Mr. Zackel. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. So in our audited financial statements, we do have a note in there that is prior period adjustment for 2000, 2013, and I'll read it out. The town has restated the prior year accumulated surplus to account for the water fund assets not previously recorded. These water fund assets are recorded and amortized in a manner consistent with the capitalization policy of the town. The adjustments to accumulate accumulated surplus at the beginning of the year for 2013 is accumulated surplus beginning of the year as previously reported was $55,885,766. There was an increase in water fund assets. And what happened is the process of moving forward with PSAB accounting to do all of the tangible capital asset reporting one of the um, pages of the water fund assets was missed. So when that came to light, we have to bring that forward to the attention of the town's audited financial statements and correct the financial statements accordingly. Um, that was addressed with the auditors and the auditors made those notations to the financial statements and to the um, statements as, as, as presented. Um, we had a decrease amortization of water fund assets of 1,440,000. $556, and the accumulated surplus for the beginning of the year was restated at $59,031,426. Thank you. And this did come up with the, with the auditor at the time when the auditor was here at the meeting. Okay. Does that answer that, Mr. Marcelli? Yeah. That's, that's, that's auditing. It, it isn't always what, we, what I would write down on my, on my list, but that's the way they do it, and they can explain it. Further, Madam Mayor and Councillors, page 12, it was reported water infrastructure, infrastructure at the present, like this year's financial statements, showing 2013, there was a 6,279,523. Actually, as of December 2013 of last year, it was 3,133,863. I mean, I'm not saying anything uh, accusing, but why, why is that uh, changes? Uh, Mr. Zackel. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff and Mr. Marcelli. Um, again, on the financial statement, you'll see it's referring to note number 13 and that's a prior period adjustment again of the tangible capital assets. It was the water capital, tangible capital assets that got restated and recorrected, and that's why it's affecting it there. So what we've did is wherever it affected the financial statements, we tried to make sure that the note that showed that it affected the prior period adjustment was on there for that. Thank you. Same page, Madam Mayor and Councillors, under commitments. In my view, it should be destination also use amounts what we committed to them. And according to the SORFI, 
Statement of Financial Information, $455,994. It should be part of on this, in my view, because right. it's basically commitment. That's our, that's 2% plus, I think all, they are receiving some of the uh, gas tax. I mean, maybe, but 2% is tourist tax. Go ahead, Mr. Zackel. Yeah, just to clarify that for Mr. Marcelli as well, the 2% hotel tax is under contract with Destination Osuyas, and they receive all of the 2% hotel tax funding for marketing initiatives through the contract with the town of Osuyas. Um, what you see for under commitments here is for capital leases and, um, and fire hall leases. Those are actual expenditures going out. Destination of Suyas, the money is coming from the province for the 2% hotel tax, and the town is transferring that money to Destination of Suyas. So it's not tax dollars that are being utilized, so that's why it doesn't show up as a commitment in the financial statements. But you are correct, um, the town is contributing to Destination of Suyas for the 2% hotel tax, and that's coming from the funding from the province. Plus, what we have a commitment was, uh, used to be quarter million years back, not anymore. I think it was the last year, 105,000, is my best of my memory. M Mr. Romanko? Well, we're, again, we're under contract uh, with Destination Asuyas for, for doing contracted services. That doesn't mean it's got to show up in the audited financial statements. It shows up in our accounts, uh, in our accounts payable. It's it's in our books, and but it's, it doesn't show up as a separate line item or anything like that in our audit statements. A destination Asuyas also does audited statements, and they have their their books audited as well. So any money they get from us has to go through that. That was done at the at the annual meeting as well. Like uh, as I don't know um, their on uh, uh, their statements, yeah. I cannot predict. That's no. I'm, but, my concern. But there is was a the meeting questions. which everyone was invited to, and it was about two weeks ago. So that was yeah. presented at that time. And uh, Madam Mayor, through through you to Mr. Zakal because it's his department. Uh, page 19. Property and other taxes. We collect, Town of Osiris collected 3934434 dollars and we paid back 3947923 It is $13,000 difference if I think we are getting commission from them collecting. No, Mr. Zackel? No, in the, um, in the collection for other governments for school district, the tax requisition was for 3934000 and that's what we collected from our taxpayers. Through the requisitions paid, we pay that $3,934,000 back, but we also get federal grants in lieu of taxes for the RCMP building and the, and the um, post office. That difference there of the 13,000 is from the federal grants and loose. So you'll always see on our audited financial statements that that amount being slightly higher. And the last regarding the financial statements is the pages, I guess it's 20, but it's not numbered, yeah, 20. There is no, and as well, pages 17. Uh, there is not uh, what's called a columns or total columns for sewer, water, roads, furniture, buildings, and so on to compare with 2014 and 2013, which one I have it here for two. Maybe, is it possible it's a mistake printed, the printers supposed to go the other way, like uh, horizontal or vertical? Because it's the two columns are missing. I, Mr. Zackel, go ahead. I you? agree with Mr. Marcelli. The 2014-2013 oh. totals were on the previous one, and I think it's on our actual audited financial statements. But it looks like it's missed on the 
on the annual report page. Oh. That was interesting that you that you caught that, Mr. Maselli. Good for you. <laughs> um, Madam Mayor. <laughs> thank, and I would and, I'd uh, like to offer. We only have yeah, another couple of minutes, and just, I'd like to offer other people an option. Just as uh, Ron is retiring, yes, I would like personally to thank him for all these years, being a very respectful towards me as a council watchdog which he never did accelerate his vehicle by me, never. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait until the end of September, it might change. <laughs> Thank and you. And the second last one, Madam Mayor and Councillors, please, please, please consider again. We are advertising for new person. We are advertising for planners and others. Now, uh, we have a contractor out of town, up to now millions of dollars siphoning, I say siphoning out of our community because that money is not spent here, it's spent outside. Please, get the civil engineer on payroll and once for all, we will save in the long run our uh, money. Thank you. And Mr. thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Have Mr. a good afternoon. Thank you. Mr. Romanko, would you like to? Again, in, in response to Mr. Marcelli's uh, ongoing uh, comments about getting an engineer in town, uh, again, understanding that the whole concept of engineering, municipal engineering, considers a number of disciplines. Whether we hire a full-time engineer to be our director of operations or continue with a civil tech engineer, we will still continue to have to need to hire outside engineering services because we cannot uh, pull together a full engineering department. A full engineering department for this community would cost several hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. and then we'd have staff commitments on an ongoing basis. Many communities, all communities, including cities in Penticton, they have full hiring of engineering services, but they continue to hire engineering companies to uh, do the specific engineering because of the number of disciplines that are involved. Absolutely. But I know the mayor, that I have to, I am compelled to answer, if you allow me, please, at the last. You know, I, Mr. Marcelli, I think I would rather let and see if there's anyone else who would like to speak. Can I to come speak. back? Uh, if, it's, if it's in the next minute, because we, we have another meeting to, uh, to have a, at, at 2 o'clock. Correct? Am I correct, Ms. Van Vianen? That, that's correct, but can I make a yes. response to one of Mr. Marcelli's comments Absolutely. with regards to the election? Okay, so uh, we did not order 5,000 ballots this year because we find that the, that is a waste of, of money because we do not typically get that many voters out. So what we did is we ordered 4,500. I sat down before the voting began with an independent accountant and we counted every single ballot that came in and when we started the election that day, there was 4,470 ballots that we had. There were 315 people voting at the advanced 1,333 voting at the general election for a total of 1,648 and all of those ballots were accounted for and what was left over was accounted for and we came back with 4,470 in total. Thank you very much. So there were no missing ballots. Okay. Mr. Zackel. I have one more, one more last comment to say. And um, on the page on the screen, um, Mr. Maselli's request about the 2014 and 13 totals, it looks like our annual report um, the document needs their page replaced because uh, as you can see the, the, the numbers are up yeah. there so we'll get that corrected in our... In it our was book. just a position. Yeah. yeah. No. Thank you. Now is there anyone else uh, in the uh, that is, is seated that would like to speak? Oh, Miss Scott? No? <laughs> you stood up and I thought maybe you'd like to say something. Okay. Well, um, that being said, thank you very much to all of you for uh, for attending our annual general meeting, and um, thank you to all of the people who have uh, who've put together all the reports. It's um, it's an amazing uh, 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 work of art, and it takes a lot of time. So thank you, and we will. I need a motion to uh, we at the report. Okay, we need a motion to the, the meeting be adjourned at 2 p.m. Do I have to go over to this side now? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to point out, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Rhodes, all in favor. 
I want you to look. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Um, I want you to look at the number of times that your names come up because I usually.